As we speak, Boris Johnson putting the final words together on a statement that he will deliver apparently very soon, could be as soon as within this hour. The expectation is, of course, that he resigns as Prime Minister after not being able to fill a cabinet and obviously not having the majority of support of his MPs. But the conversation now is about whether he goes today or whether he gets to be the caretaker for a few weeks after until the Conservative Party in the UK chooses its next leader. The Brexit leader, the great host of GB News, the man who saw this coming a long time ago, is none other than Nigel Farage, who joins us right now from the UK. Thank you so much, mate, for joining us at short notice on such a big day. So before we get to the what's going to happen, all the rest of it here, the hope of the Johnson prime ministership versus the reality of its end. Is there part of you that's sad or how do you feel about this? So the Conservative Party never wanted Brexit. Remember that. They had been the party of Europe for 50 years, in the pockets of the big businesses who loved this globalist structure. Boris Johnson himself, whilst he was a journalist on the Daily Telegraph, wrote amusing Eurosceptical articles, articles about the nonsenses in Brussels, but he only joined the Leave campaign at literally five minutes to midnight. So they were pushed into it. In 2019, in 2019 the party was humiliated in a European election. They came, they came fifth in a national election. My party, the Brexit party, stormed, won it by miles. They then realised we've got to get Brexit done. Johnson campaigned on that and built a big majority. But, Paul, they didn't learn the lesson. Brexit wasn't just about leaving the European Union. Brexit was about a new kind of politics. Brexit was about saying no to being dictated to by London-based mainstream media, career politicians, from very, very privileged backgrounds. They got Brexit done, and then Downing Street became the same chumocracy of privileged people, and they decided, having been elected as Conservatives, they govern as Liberals and make net zero their main priority. So that's what went wrong. Brexit was about more than leaving the EU. It was about new politics. They never, ever understood it. And so over these last couple of years, Genuine Conservatives have looked on at rising taxes, an increased size of a state, an obsession with net zero to the detriment of manufacturing industries, a refusal to produce our own gas, oil and coal, which we've got plenty of. But to cap it all, and the reason this has come to a head in the end, is if you're going to be a liar, you've got to have a very good memory. And in the end, <laughs> in the end, <laughs> well, it's true. Think about it in life, you know. Uh, it is true. And in the end, in the end, it was a sex scandal that brought him down. Now, I'm going to, you know, puff my chest out here and say that no one does sex scandals like the Brits. We're brilliant at sex scandals. We are absolutely Mate, top in the world. You won it with an sex. apple in the mouth 20 years ago, and it's never been beaten. The apple in the mouth was unbelievable. <laughs> For accuracy... I have to tell you that it was an orange, but not that I was witness to it. <laughs> <laughs> you understand. So, so, so let's explain to people, because I want to explain to people about, because you know, they might think, oh, this is party gate, right? The straw that broke the camel's back was there was an appointment that was made for a, a, yes. a bloke who uh, an allegation has come forward that, uh, that, he, uh, that he touched up somebody in a nightclub, but then the Prime Minister was informed about it got ministers to go out and say he didn't know anything about it, and then it turns around he does. He did know about it, but then he turned around and said, oh, no, no, I forgot that I knew about it. And in many That's ways, right. this, it wasn't just the lying, it was the forcing your, your ministers to go out and knowingly lie that meant we can't do this anymore, right? Yes. I mean, look, you know, this particular individual, Mr Pincher, very appropriately named if you think about it, um, and Mr Pincher had a reputation going back years for getting absolutely boozed, absolutely K-lined, and touching up young men. Everyone knew about it. I knew about it. It had been known about it before. He was forced to resign over allegations like this in 2017. Yet, he was let back into government. And last week, he went to, a, not a nightclub, the Carlton Club, a posh West End gentleman's club frequented by Conservatives, got drunk, groped a couple of men, and this led to, did the Prime Minister know that this guy had a bad track record? No, the Prime Minister had no knowledge. Then we were told 
The Prime Minister had no specific knowledge of any, and already it's beginning to unravel, and ministers are being sent out to lie on behalf of the government and being made to look stupid. Ultimately, it turned out that Johnson had been briefed about this MP in a senior position of authority in the party. It turned out he'd been briefed up to five times that this guy was a bad egg, really bad news. And when it all came to that, Johnson then said, I forgot about it. And it was as clear as the nose on your face that these were lies. Now, as I say, you can get away with lying if you've got a good memory. But when you start to contradict your own lies, you had it. And we went through Partygate. We went through us being told, you can't go and see your dying grandmother. You know, you can't meet up, even outside for drinks. You can't do anything. Whilst we learn they parted away in number 10. And the moral of the story, and I can go back through scandals in British politics going back decades, the moral of the story is very simple, and it's a good one, not just for politics, but actually for every young person in life to learn. And it's this. When you're caught red-handed, the only thing to do is to hold up your hands, fess up, apologise, and hope you can move on. It is always the cover-up that does for you. It's the cover-up that does for you. It's the lie that does for you far more than the act itself. And so what we saw, and you know, you described it as the straw that broke the camel's back. What we've seen over the last three to four days is a catastrophic loss of support, both in the House of Commons for Johnson, but, and this is important, in the country as well. The last opinion poll taken 48 hours ago showed 54% of those who voted for Johnson, for the Tories, as recently as 2019, wanted him to resign. And by last night, I mean, it was almost like a comedy film. You know, there weren't enough people <laughs> to fill all the jobs needed to run the country. They were resigning in droves. And this morning, we went through 50 resignations. I mean, as I said first thing this morning, Johnson was 50 not out. I mean, maybe cricket could be his next game. Who's to say? So it is all a very sad end on a personal level for Johnson. But you know what? It's difficult to feel sympathy. He's brought it all on himself. And now the big question is, as we wait for this resignation statement, the big question is, does he go now or does he hang on as prime minister until late September, early October? Now, that list of names that you're screening up now for your viewers, most of those in their letters to him said that he'd broken trust, he hadn't told the truth, and he didn't have the integrity to lead the country. Well, if he hasn't got that integrity, how on earth can he stay in position for the next few months? And this is what we're all waiting to find out. My, my own view is he will be in number 10 now, being urged by people to you know, order the van to load up his furniture and to go. But I think what he'll do, I think what he'll do is he'll say, I was voted for by the people, I haven't been removed by the people. There's important work to do. There's a war in Ukraine where I'm giving leadership to the Western world, and I will stay on through these important times until a new leader is chosen. That is what I think he is going to do. And if he does, we'll be in for another week of endless civil war within the British Conservative Party. And here's the bigger problem. This is about much more than Boris Johnson. This is about the entirety of the Conservative movement in this country. He is dragging it so far down into the gutter. And it could even be too late now. But unless we get a clean break from this, a reassertion of conservative principles, bold leadership, and a promise that politics will open up as Brexit promised that it would do, then I think come the next general election, we will see the most catastrophic loss of conservative seats that we've seen in modern times. Nigel, as always, I love watching your show. It's been particularly good the past few days. People can see it here on Flash. You can get a podcast as well. Thank you so much, mate. Looking forward to, uh, to talking to you again uh, next week here on the show. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Good man. Nigel Farage, the Brexit leader, joining us from the UK.